entrepreneurial streak before you came to England or was it something that you developed because you wanted to push yourself and grow while you were here? Yeah, I always I always get asked this question. I think, I don't know if you saw a report that was launched by the Centre for Entrepreneur in 2016 that says migrants are twice as likely to launch their own business than um not just Brits, but any any uh, a native. The reality is that it's not because we are more entrepreneurial. It's because we don't get to the same opportunities, right? So anyone who is born in the UK goes to school, goes to uni, and then most probably you get a job or you do an internship and you get a good job as soon as you... Uh, when I say a good job, like even for me at the time, working in Selfridges or John Lewis is a good job compared to washing dishes or, or, or doing cleaning. So it's not, I don't think I was an, an, uh, an, I had the entrepreneurial spirit. And the reality was I was very tired of just taking the bus. I had no money to take the tube. I was eating tuna sandwiches for about six months. I, for about two years, I couldn't smell tuna. <laughs> Seriously. So it's not that I I was a, a an entrepreneur or a head than me. It, it was because no one would give me a job. I must have sent about a thousand CVs and not even an interview. Sorry, I, I just dropped your microphone, so sorry. <laughs> I'll go back. But um yeah, it was it was um it was that. Yeah. So it's it's a uh, 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 it's the reality of migration, I think. It, you know, unless you go with a job and with a company and, and yeah. apartment is sorted and, you know, when you're young and, and you're going on an adventure, reality is very different. I don't, you know, I don't victimize myself. I don't look back and I think, oh my God, or, you know, I don't cry. I don't write regrets. I don't hate England. I don't hate... On the contrary, I think I met wonderful people that helped me. As But I said, I want this to happen or I want, like I want a job. Um, I remember I in a bar, I became friends with the HR manager of... Um, uh, Debenhams at the time and I had no idea uh, it was in a gay bar you know we would start talking and I said oh what are you doing here and I said oh this is what I'm doing and I said oh well, I'm looking for a job he said I can help you by redoing your CV mm. and it was amazing you know to get the HR now looking back I had no idea what Debenham was at the time I didn't realize how big it was um, and then I said yeah sure let's have a coffee and I didn't even have money to pay for a coffee <laughs> it was so bad but he was, you know, it was great. So I'm very grateful that I met wonderful people that helped me. But one thing that I, I always made sure is that I knew what I wanted. Like, I wanted this to happen, and, and then I looked for help. I was never, um, I had no problem asking mm. for people. I, the only thing they could say is no. Yeah. Um, I learned once in a course that no, you always have. You already have no, right? Until you ask, and then and you'll be able to get, so... Yeah, it's so important because I think so many people are afraid to ask for help or they see that as a weakness yes, or... Yeah, yeah. And actually it's true, you just never know yes. until you ask. Yes. So it was like um, when um, recently I launched a magazine, a high profile, and we were wondering who should we put on the cover of the first one because it was high profile. Um, when we were doing brainstorming with the team and I said, who is the, high, the highest profile person in the country that we could put on the cover? And I said, the queen. <laughs> And then they all look, say, but um, you can't put in the Queen. The Queen said, who, who said we cannot? The Queen is in several magazines. So a lot of phone calls and a lot of emails. And, and then I got the Queen on the cover. So who can say no to you, right? Yeah. So if you know where to go and ask for help and know people, you can get. So. Yeah.